In this episode, I dive deeply into the variety of ways spiritual awakening experiences occur and how they impact our lives, our physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual selves. Discover which ones you've had and which ones other people have and learn methods that will guide you in continuing your spiritual awakening experience. Characteristics of spiritual awakening experiences vary vastly and can include feeling of transcending limitations and beliefs and accessing deep understanding about oneself, as well as the world, universe, and multiverse. People may realize subtly there is more to this world than they previously were led to believe. They have a profound sense of love and openness, being guided and knowing that changes life direction and desire to serve others. A person can experience a sense of harmony and peacefulness that includes forgiveness and letting go of stressors that brings resolution to previously unresolved issues. Some people may experience healing abilities and accessing heightened intuitive abilities that are long lasting. Other changes that can occur are sensitivities and heightened perception seeing the unseen to odors, places, colors, people, situations, and auditory awareness. The cultural prejudices and limitations may seem like glaring hypocrisies, and there may be a deep compassion and sense of longing to connect again to this deep state. If you have experienced a spiritual awakening experience that is not included in this list, please make a comment below. And if you have questions, you can send them to the email that's listed below. Often the process of spiritual awakening is described as a one-time life-changing expose up the person's previous life, which is true, especially for people who have a near-death experience. However, for many people, including myself, there are multiple interfaces with changes in consciousness, changes in perspectives, some of which are difficult to navigate, and others seem to integrate more seamlessly into the life we're living. As mentioned above, near-death experiences have made huge strides for bringing awareness to co-occurring experiences that occur when a person has experienced the death of their physical body. There are so many people now from a variety of careers, ages, genders, countries, and circumstances who identify a guide and or a knowing and ultimately loving presence that is with them through their experience as well as other consistent occurrences. While some near-death experiences gain insight of their life changes when they return to their body, some forget parts, and as they reintegrate over time, they remember what their new purpose and goals are, often around healing and helping others. These are all dramatic changes that come with dramatic reintegration needs and time to make sense of what happened to them. Now, with groups where people can share and different books about near-death experiences. It's less isolating. And I've met people who didn't know about these online groups and have difficulty and sometimes still have difficulty integrating themselves into their life or even revealing the new abilities that they have and how they're enhancing their work and their life. Another area that is a way that people have spiritual awakening experiences is through out-of-body experiences, which are more common and often occur to people when they are intentionally doing specific practices and can occur spontaneously. Often children have out-of-body experiences and then forget that they had these experiences. Certainly that was my case. 
And as they get older, the out-of-body experience recedes into the background until there's some kind of trigger or they engage in personal development work that brings forth these different kinds of experiences. And these are not related to trauma. Having out-of-body experiences as a child and seeing or perceiving the physical body separate from consciousness is a natural occurring phenomenon, but because we don't discuss these occurrences, have an interest, or demonstrate in any way their value, children learn to immerse their consciousness into their physical body and forget they are not their physical body and they can move back and forth. And they forget about these out-of-body experiences. Remembering having an out-of-body experience as a child can trigger being more open to having more of these experiences. Out-of-body experiences can be at the least sometimes disconcerting for people when there's no framework for these kinds of experiences, and for some people may even seem unnerving. When do our out-of-body experiences occur? Out-of-body experiences can occur when people are falling asleep, when awakenings from sleep, and these respectively are called hypnopompic and hypnagogic states, which is how we gain awareness of having these experiences. The following example is an, of an adult who remembered many out-of-body experiences as a child and that it was familiar and normal. Elena remembers as a child being on the ceiling, seeing her sleeping self below. It was a very common experience and she did not find it unusual. It was not until she was in her 50s that she remembered how this seemed normal and then triggered memories of this happening at other times as a spiritual awakening experience and more about this later. Out of body Occurrences also happen when a person learns to channel. There are different kinds of channeling and levels of how people interface as a channel. Some people leave their body and observe the exchange as an out-of-body experience, while others are not in that mode. A person can have an out-of-body experience when they have been meditating and have access to deep states. During this process, there are often incremental adjustments the majority of the time that build slowly, so the out-of-body experience occurs as a subtle change. And there are some people who have an out-of-body experience with meditation that is less subtle and more of a dramatic and sudden change. Some explanations I've heard for this occurrence are that the person had previously been a meditator, yet another time when a person can have an out-of-body experience is when using psychedelics, which can even include cannabis for some people who are sensitive. I had a woman report for her first time using cannabis resulted in her leaving her body. She felt her consciousness on the ceiling and was simultaneously aware she had the body that was speaking. Other times when people experience an out-of-body experience, when there is what is called disassociation for survival, when experiencing trauma, and they feel they're trapped or frozen. In this situation, as with near-death experiences that are more extreme out-of-body experiences, there can be a separation of awareness from the physical body that is significant. In our language that describes this, we use the term, I am beside myself, and that describes this lack of integration. The following story illustrates an out-of-body occurrence as a stress response. John was in armed combat for the Navy and was with his companion when they were surrounded by the enemy. They had previously scoped out the surroundings and were certain they were doomed. This pressure resulted in John having an out-of-body experience where he saw his grandmother who informed him there was only one way out and she showed him that way. 
He shared his vision out of body experience with his companion, and they took the path, which was how I heard the story. While Western medicine and mental health categorizes these experiences as a disassociative disorder, many cultures understand these are useful and normal occurrences and not a mental health disassociative experience. Furthermore, many cultures have sacred methods for engaging with out-of-body experiences for revealing insight, guidance, and understanding as a method to engage beyond the ordinary world. The significance of this is there are parameters, there are safety methods, there's compassion and integration methods, and value attributed to these methods as systems that are not considered an illness, but they have a purpose and value. And disassociative disorders are considered to be complex mental health problems by Western medicine and mental health that have a range of different applications and can be from severe and also related to substance abuse, post-traumatic stress, depression, and other illnesses. Shaktipa is another spiritual awakening experiences and Shaktipa means psychic energy in Sanskrit that is transferred by a spiritual master. It is an intentional conferring or transferring of spiritual energy directly from a highly evolved spiritual being or deity to another person. The spiritual energy transference can occur through a look, a mantra, a touch, and sometimes through an object, and usually into the third eye and affecting the heart of the recipient. There's no forceful energy in the transference, and a person cannot seek it out. Although it is considered an initiation, which may imply the person has elected to study with a specific spiritual master, there may be no prior meeting the evolved spiritual person, there may be no prior commitment or exchange, and so it seems to be a spontaneous occurrence, but it is always predestined, which has happened to me. Intense meditation experiences are also spiritual awakening, which occurs when a person is practicing a kind of meditation and is not limited to a particular kind. While it is often assumed a person who has been practicing meditation for a long time consistently and with dedication would be the person who would have a profound spiritual awakening meditation experience. This is not always how it occurs. There are people who start meditating, which may be in an environment where others meditate, which makes their experience stronger, who have a profound shift of consciousness that's life-changing. And sometimes this can occur when a person has experienced trauma. So getting support with trauma is always beneficial before and during using meditation. Sacred sites are other places where people can experience a spiritual awakening. There are specific places on earth that have potent energy that is unique to that area and strongly saturated into the land or the environment. Some ancient sacred sites have been built upon for thousands of years and have a more contemporary structure on them, which does not deter the sacredness or the potency of the location. The sacred sites for this section are those naturally occurring, not man-made, that have healing, inspiration, and an ancient palpable connection to this dynamic special energy that is separate from the surrounding area and distinct. Sacred sites may be a mountain, mesa, cave, lake, river, well, forest, land formation, such as Sedona and the Vortexes. Other sacred sites may be pyramids or anthropomorphic geomorphs. An anthropomorphic geomorph is a formation that denotes the sacred energy of a location, 
which is a naturally occurring formation like the door in the rock in Peru called Aramuru near Lake Titicaca, a geomorph over the ancient site of Delphi, which is the even older site of Gaia in Greece, is of a woman in the rock, which is mostly not even noticed. A person who is not attuned to the energy may travel through the location and not even notice how the area is different, notice subtle shifts that others notice, and other people may be drawn to the location to visit, to make a pilgrimage, or even to live. Some areas that are sacred sites are part of the ancient mythology of different areas on Earth, and other areas are protected and not known or revealed. A sacred site can awaken a deep emotional connection that was not known about prior to visiting the location, can trigger memories, and even a spiritual awakening that transforms the person's consciousness is profoundly influential. Sometimes this can continue or be noticed even after visiting the site. Sacred sites are not the same, and each one holds different energy that is often palpable by some people. I have visited sacred sites where there are tears flowing, memories arise, and there's a wave of connection through the people who have made the journey. Nighttime dreams, which may include visitation, lucid dreams, or dream walking, are other times when people can have spiritual awakening experiences. Because our consciousness is no longer in our ordinary state where we abide by the restrictions of the cultural paradigm and social norms, we're able to have a variety of experiences during this dream time. The variety of experiences can include spiritual awakening, which occurs even through memory retention. In some cultures and in ancient times, dreams were very valuable for making all important decisions by leaders as well as peasants, for making peace and invasions, making deals, marriages, and other purposes. Specific nighttime dreams we recall are so distinctly different from our other dreams and have more vibrancy, greater emotional impact, than even when we are in our normal waking states. These types of dreams often stay with us through our lifetime, which may be a lucid dream, visitation dream, or dream walking. We also often are able to dismiss powerful dreams with the term, it was only a dream, because our culture hasn't valued their influential nature. Our nighttime dreams can bring memory, messages, profound insight, guidance, and spiritual content and information that is particularly poignant and dynamic. Often these kinds of dreams are called dream walking, which is planning to enter the dream of a specific individual or group in advance for specific purposes. In benevolent applications, dream walking is done by a spiritual teacher who is working with a student or a group of students to convey symbols, messages, ideas, inspiration, and guidance. To learn more about different kinds of spiritual awakening dreams, check out the video and blog, Spiritual Awakening Dreams. The next area is after death communication. After death communication most of the time occurs through the dream state and often is a spiritual awakening experience because it reveals there is communication after the physical body is no longer on earth. This expands our capacity of what is possible and there is more to this life. This is a common occurrence and is often remembered because it is different from other dreams and has a vivid nature of content and sensory experiences that include thought transference, also known as telepathy. The characteristics of after-death communication include as a pre-planned event and not randomly occurring, provides comfort and support and a deep emotional connection and exchange, there's a meaningful content of information. The occurrence remains strongly in memory, 
often through life, there are different senses involved and can include auditory, knowing, touching, odors, seeing, and perceiving. There is no specification on how short after someone passes or even right before they pass or the length of time after that person's death that the after-death communication can occur. After-death communication dreams are not limited to humans, but can be with animals and other our creatures that are our companions and friends and spiritual masters. In Western mental health, traditionally, an after-death communication would be identified as a hallucination. However, this is an outmoded concept, and after-death communication is normal and common. The following true story shows how an after-death communication is also a spiritual awakening experience, and this is called Jenna's dreamwalking dream. A psychiatric medical doctor, Jenna, who was not into spiritual awakening experiences, was married to a medical doctor who was also an alcoholic. She had given him an ultimatum to stop drinking because she was going to divorce him. He died not long afterwards. Certainly there were different emotions with his passing and the circumstances with their relationship. One day she sat in her chair in her living room in the middle of the day, which was not a normal occurrence, to rest for a moment. And then she heard someone coming down the hallway and she moved out of the chair and felt the chair underneath her and heard and felt her feet walk across the floor. And there she met her husband. She was very pleased and happy and they hugged and exchanged a deep connection. She felt his body in her arms, smelled his odor and heard his voice. Then his cell phone went off and he said he had to go. She then woke up from the quote dream unquote. She remembered she felt herself get out of the chair and walk across the room and could not believe she had been dreaming because of all the different sensory experiences of sound, touch, sight, thought transference, also known as telepathy, that were involved. And the most important was the feeling of comfort and connection that was not only good but great. This was a time sequence of events that told her there was life after death communication. And this event was completely and strategically planned for her in time. Previously, Jenna would have identified this experience if someone else told her about it as a hallucination. And for her, it was a spiritual awakening experience that validated many different areas of life beyond our ordinary consciousness Intense yoga experiences are also another way that a person can have a spiritual awakening because of the specific postures, breathing patterns, and interconnection has a profound effect on the connection between the mind, body, emotions, and spirit that develops calm and centeredness as well as the flow of energy through the body. This flow of energy and the postures release blocked energy, creating an expansiveness. An intense yoga experience can result in a spiritual awakening where there's access to greater knowing, harmonization, being in the feeling of flow and connection, which are also characteristics of spiritual awakening experiences in general. Another area is an intense musical experience, also called an IME where people have a spiritual awakening that is considered to be an extreme significance with long-term effects. While the term intense musical experience is fairly new, the practice of using particular sounds and music and also chants to transform consciousness for insight, guidance, spiritual alignment, problem solving, creative solutions, interconnection, as a spiritual awakening responses are ancient. Here are the four characteristics of intense musical experiences. Number one is they occur as an altered state of consciousness that connects to harmony and self-realization. 
Number two is once a person has an intense musical experience, they are significantly motivated to create the same harmony in their daily lives. And number three is during an intense musical experience, the person develops various interpersonal resources they can continue to use. And number four, experiencing an intense musical experience results in long-term changes in personal values, including social relationships, how they engage in life, activities they pursue, personal development, and perception of the meaning of life. There is a powerful shift in awareness that is fulfilling, harmonious, and connects the person in a deep way to their spirituality and values and changes the way they live their life. Cultivating and continuing our spiritual awakening journey is enhanced and continues to develop when we use specific practices like using curated sound music as a regular practice because they include creating neuroplasticity. This means that our neurological system forms new connections as neurogenesis that are part of learning and adaptation. This is also rewiring the brain where it's reorganizing the connections. And in this process, there are profound changes. While neuroplasticity is occurring, there's also the release of stress and trauma. Epigenetic changes also occur where there's new neuroplasticity. And this means the growth of new neurons and synapses changes how we respond to stressors without changing our DNA. And these epigenetic responses are so significant. They change our predilection for physical and mental illness and promote positive changes in our gene expression related to reducing stress, emotional regulation, and improving cognitive function. But these are only part of the amazing and profound changes that are occurring when we are engaging in systems that continue our spiritual awakening, epigenetic rewiring of our neurological system. The ability to engage in transformative methods that change our consciousness and response to trauma and stress is empowerment and evolutionary improvement. Because our entire physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual being is dynamically changed by these epigenetic responses, we are on the threshold of profound changes because we are valuing spiritual awakening. These include diminishing of stress with cortisol, the stress hormone, and inflammation that are the underlying causes of mental and physical illness. The following is a detailed list of the different areas that are significantly positively changed when we engage in regular practice as using curated sound healing that rewires our neurological system. Number one, there's stress reduction and improving of the immune system. This is a large contribution to staying in a healthy state and being resistant to illness. There's a decrease in stress and inflammation building in to our health and creating longevity, resilience, ability to adapt and innovate to evolving circumstances and situations. Number two is there's a diminishing of external influences that distort our decisions. Engaging in methods that shift our perspective, our brain waves, our heart rate, and our breathing respiration reduces our biases that are unconscious influences from our emotions, expectations, and social norms. The social norms are how we're influenced by often unspoken but implied informal rules that govern our behavior in groups and society. People are able to approach problems without the influence of these social norms. So they're more objective and they can arrive at a wider range of solutions. And number three, Different spiritual awakening experiences impact and deactivate the part of the ego that is engaged with negative cyclic thoughts, pervasive intrusive thoughts, and the ability to step outside of these thought patterns. 
some of the methods that contribute to spiritual awakening, like yoga, specific meditations, curated sound and music systems, facilitate relaxation and connection to restoration, states that lessen the controlling elements of the ego and give us new perspective insights and creative solutions. And number four, there's a developing of compassion and empathy, which is caring and concern for others, emotional empathy and cognitive empathy is being able to connect to other people's perspectives and situations. The ability to have compassion and empathy are enhanced through brainwave regulation and methods that connect us to emotional centers in the brain and heart and gut. And this is especially important since there's been a decline in compassion and empathy over the last 30 years, according to research. Spiritual awakening experiences as a process cultivate compassion and empathy. And number five, insight and intuition are experienced cognitively within and within the body as a feeling awareness. Spiritual awakening experiences contribute just as curated sound healing practices enhance brain waves that promote deeper processing and the emergence of intuitive insights to see patterns, to notice them, and notice relationships and patterns with what seem to be disparate events or experiences as an enhanced ability. Number six is cognitive flexibility and creativity. Spiritual awakening methods that change consciousness, like yoga, specific meditation, and curated sound patterns are transformative practices that stimulate and enhance our ability to have flexibility in discovering new solution. There's a fostering of open-mindedness, the ability to adapt to situations, to develop strategies, and to view problems from multiple perspectives perspectives with creative problem-solving skills. Number seven, deeper states of consciousness, like accessing alpha theta and theta brain waves, in create entrainment, which occurs with our brain and body emotions, and with these frequencies. This resonance develops increasing attention and decreases becoming distracted. There's a sustained way that improves our concentration and focus. And number eight is resilience. Resilience is the ability to bounce back from challenges and difficult situations. When we engage in transformative practices, there are changes that develop our resilience. This develops the ability to navigate through difficulties more easily, resolve conflict and solve problems. And number nine, improved memory, decision-making behaviors and holding content is a vital function of our memory. Reducing stress and inflammation improves our recall and benefits all of our neurological functions. New neurons are created and the ability to adapt, new information, learn and process occurs. And number 10 is social and cultural evolution. Specific practices are beneficial to engage with a group of people that enhances the individual's experiences related to their spiritual awakening connections, their inner wisdom, and their own practices. When people intentionally synchronize through sound healing meditation experiences with others, there's a level of connect that enhances the experience as a complete social connection for the group and the individual. When people share these sound healing methods in person, there's an exponential heightening of the individual's experiences and the benefits. Number 11 is about our mental health. These practices contribute to an ongoing basis. They, based on research that already shows there's a relationship when we shift out of ordinary consciousness, which is where we are, if you're listening to this, into alpha brain waves or deeper, the lessons depression, anxiety, 
trauma, PTSD, schizophrenia, and bipolar, and our predilection for physical illnesses. When we draw upon transformative practices, we are rewiring our brain from holding stress and trauma and shifting into these restorative states is healing to our nervous system and creates restoration and recovery. In many ancient cultures, people have used sound and musical methods, as I mentioned before, chanting and specific rhythms and patterns for entrainment, for accessing entrancing states, and these use rhythms and tones which transform our consciousness. These methods were and are used in gatherings for social connection, harmonization, interconnection, developing wisdom, for healing, restoration, and for accessing expansive awareness. Often wisdom was sought through particular sound patterns that carried the listener into advanced state for discovering insight, for solutions, guidance, and understanding. Just as spiritual awakening and transformative experiences are not new, neither are the use of specific sound healing rhythms and patterns. Defining what contributes to spiritual awakening, understanding how it is contributing to our collective consciousness, positive changes in evolution is leading the way for the cultural paradigm for our mental, physical, emotional, and spiritual well-being. Thanks for watching, and please like and subscribe, and check out the three Malete programs. Mm -hmm.